On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we get back to work on the $300 Ford Ranger that won't start. What is going on guys? I am Watch Che Argo and today uh, this intro is being shot way after the actual video was shot because uh, I came home to edit it and found out that the microphone was unhooked for like the first 20 minutes of the video. So I'm just going to explain to you guys kind of what went down. So if you've been watching the Ford Ranger progress, we bought this thing for $300. It's a 1993 Ford Ranger with a four cylinder 2.3 liter engine. And no matter what we do, it won't start and we've been working very hard on it for uh, you know a couple days. Uh, we worked on it for about two days and then while I was down at 2K, Josh kept working on it for about two more days, you know, pulled the bed off, verified fuel pump, went through, I mean, we went through everything. And today we decided we were gonna check timing. And the easiest way to check base timing, of course, is with the timing light. But to do it the easy way, the engine has to be running. So we thought, why don't we just open the air box up, run the thing on starting fluid again. While I was spraying starting fluid in, Josh jumped this with the, jumped the starter solenoid, it's right here. And then he had the timing light as well, so he could check the timing, run this side, and I could make sure that we had fuel into the engine with the starting fluid, and of course, part of the process to time Ford engines is unplugging the spout connector. So we did. We unplugged the spout connector. I stopped spraying starting fluid. The engine ran perfectly as soon as we let off the starting fluid. And uh, I was a little confused by that. I was like, huh, everything seems to be perfect. So we put the spout connector back in while it was running. Of course, we had our base timing. It was 10 degrees exactly on the dot, which means that it's probably all timed correctly. And uh, when we put the spout connector in, it went up to 20, which is the advanced position. And it seems like the computer is controlling timing just fine. While that was happening, it, we looked under the truck and it seems like uh, maybe there was a rat's nest or something. It blew all that out from underneath the engine. So we thought maybe the exhaust might have been clogged. There was there's a slight chance there was something in there. We kind of doubted at this point, but we were like, well, it's been running for a while. It's probably cleaned up. Uh, why don't we put the spout connector back and shut the thing off and restart it. Of course, we tried that. We shut it off knowing it probably wouldn't come back. Josh restarts the thing, stuttering and trying to run, and it will just fire like every, I don't know, two seconds or something. It's sitting there like, and it'll keep doing it infinitely, which is a lot better than before already because before we would crank it, it would start and die immediately, and that was it. So it's trying to run with the spout connector back in. So turn the key off, pull the connector back out, starts, perfectly. We also once again tried it without the MAF and with the MAF and uh, it, it actually ran better with the MAF so I think that's working perfectly. We hooked the classic Ford and Novo code reader back up and uh, tried to pull the codes. We were getting the same codes again, the 10, 111, and 539. 539 is of course, it says AC or defrost in the on position, which is fine. I don't, that's not really even a code. I'm not sure why it throws one. This old thing still works though. I don't think it offers you anything more than a paperclip would, but it does just tell you what the codes it's flashing are. For those of you wondering what a spout connector is, it's literally just a jumper. I don't think there's even a resistor in this or anything. I think it's just a jumper and it plugs in right there. There's also another one right there that we don't quite know what that one's for. We do know the pink wire one is the one for the ignition timing. And that's the one that locks it into the default value at 10 degrees. So you basically just stick that in and pull it back out. It's really hard to get it out once it's in there uh, because this has the, the worst generation of electrical connectors I've ever seen in these trucks. But that's it, it's a diagnostic connector. Pull it, it sets back to base timing, put it back in, it can advance the timing, the computer can control it. Really simple. SPOUT just stands for spark output. Uh, it's exactly what it says. It's not an acronym or anything like that. They just shoved two words together, made them shorter. Spark output. I think that gets you guys to about where the microphone picks back up and you can see the rest of the video happen in reality. We pulled this connector, which we thought was the spout connector, and it was sitting there. We had it doing its little like I run every once in a while thing. And then 
we, Josh was like, pull this one. It's the spout connector, right? And we pulled it and it runs perfectly. Makes no sense. It was already running and as soon as he pulled it out, it, it just cleaned right up. Put it back in and it shouldn't, like idle down or idle up. So now the timing's back. Runs perfectly. That is weird. It, the math is unhooked. This doesn't make any sense now. It likes the math. Took a second to adjust and it went right back in. I'm gonna add a little more air in here. We only have the garage partially open. Go girl, go. Well, that adds a new dimension to our problem. What is that spout? I don't, I don't know which one's spout and... I don't know what the other one is. Yeah, what is the other? <laughs> Why does it have two? Thanks Ford. Gonna mark these things. Okay, now you're gonna try to start it and it's not gonna run? Yeah. Okay. It won't. All right, there she is, broken. Man, that thing's hard to get out of there. <laughs> this is the anti-run module right here. That's what that is. Whoa. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Plug it back in, it's fine. Perfect. It does not make any sense. We put the water pump back. We started it with the uh, connector out. We're gonna go around the block and see if this thing gets any better. Hood down. Getting the taillights out of the bed. Yeah. We're good, huh? Yep. Will it blend? We do have throttle. Yeah. There is no coolant temp though. This is a cream puff. Never abused, never erased. I know what I've got. $3,000. <laughs> I know what I've got. I know what I've got. I'm not gonna get a couple rolls of toilet paper out of this thing. I know, man. I only use Angel Soft, and I don't want the coronavirus to mess that up, but I couldn't find any this morning. So if somebody offered me, you know, three pallets worth, <laughs> I'm probably down. This, this thing is priceless. What's up? What's Brand up? new Ford Ranger over there. <laughs> <laughs> we should go park this beside their new Ford Ranger, see if they're confused. All right, let's get our O'Reilly. It's gonna run rich until you do. Yeah, it is. Let us, let's make the O'Reilly's trip with this thing. It's got a tag on it, second gear. It seems to run really good. It does seem like it runs really well. It's so smooth. Now if we can just make it start reliably. Still no coolant temp though. You're right. We gotta, gotta put a coolant temp sensor on it. All right, here's a pull. Good night. 35 miles an hour, man. Woo. Oh, we were cooking. <laughs> Did you put the spout back in? Yeah, yeah, we've got all the timing. This is a race car. Yeah, can you imagine? 20 degrees. Uh, the, we have to leave this running if we get to O'Reilly's because it won't start again unless we pull the connector. Then we'll be out there looking dumb. Ah, we look like we got a race car, man. That's true, you do have to open the hood on the race car. To, we've, got so. no, we've got no heat, though. That's concerning. That is weird, because we know it's full of coolant. What if she's got a bad water pump, too? Is the gauge moving? The gauge is... I don't, I don't think the gauge is moving. Man, have a stuck water pump. Yeah, but it's spinning. Or... You think the impeller's stuck? have a stuck thermostat. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. I guess that's possible, huh? It's just not heating up at all. Yeah. Well, it will heat up, then, if we just wait. Eventually, yeah. Let it sit still. Yep. I, cardboard in front of it. Put some block off the radiator. Here. I, uh, you know what? It might be coming up very slowly. <clears throat> it looks like it's between cold and normal right now. Kind of, yeah. I think it's working. All right. She's cleaning up. Uh, fuel gauge keeps it right on dropping. We might have to put some fuel in it. Oh, it's coming up. 100% coming up. We made it. Uh, we actually drove this thing around for a long time. It seems like it's running really well. Would you? 
I don't know. Hood's not hot. It seems like it's a thermostat. It just warm. Yeah, it, it was slowly warming up and uh, the coolant temp sensor seems to work. So let's grab a thermostat. Well, we were making good progress. We gotta figure out the spout connector thing still, but this is a great drive. The thing ran awesome, went and got some parts, and now we're going to do a thermostat. That should help the thing come up to temp quicker. It smells delicious. It smells like a pins oil, if I were to guess. <laughs> This is our upper coolant hose right here. Comes off this tiny little cute radiator and it goes into this hard elbow and that is the thermostat housing. So I think there's two bolts on that. I'm gonna pop those two bolts loose. I already threw a pan underneath. Uh, better kick that pan under a little bit more. Looks like we're lined up now. I'm gonna break that loose, drop it, and I've got a new gasket and a thermostat. So uh, this should only take a couple seconds. Pull out two bolts, push, twist to remove the thermostat. Put it back together with a new gasket, done and done. So this is kind of interesting. I popped that thing off, two bolts, like I said. What on earth? <laughs> Inside the block, everything looks great, but uh, everything around that thermostat does look to be very clogged and full of trash. So uh, the new gasket here, show it to you guys. Just trying to pick all this up. That thermostat's at 3829. I'll throw a link in the description below. And if I can get it open here. The gasket is one of those self-adhesive ones that should have no problem going on there and be super fast installed, stays in place. Uh, whatever happened there was was not that. Coolant top back off, old thermostat out of here. Good to go. Well, I'd say that wraps this up. We got it fixed for what? $7 in parts that we did need. Oh, well, $107 of parts that we did need. The battery was, it was about $100 and a couple of quick trips to O'Reilly's and then a fuel pressure regulator that we probably didn't need, but we did it anyway. Oh, and add another $5 to that for a fuel filter. But uh, I'd say there's $130, $40 in the fix and it's got lots of brand new stuff and should run for a very long time. Oh, that ECU was $51, it is on the way. I had to special order that. Uh, you know, who knows, We this thing could run forever if you just put a switch on it. Just like a fuel pump switch like you'd have on any old car as an immobilizer. Um, we could just stick a switch right here, cut this wire, extend it into the cabin, and you know, flip the switch to start it, flip it back on uh, to run. And if you leave it in run, nobody would be able to start this thing. And honestly, I think the Ranger is a relatively stolen car. So uh, it might just save somebody a truck. Anyway, the very last thing that it needs is a new cooling fan. The old one kind of exploded when it was coming out the second time. Uh, it's so old and brittle, look at this thing. <laughs> anyway, that blade just fell off and we don't wanna put it back in with it being off balance. Fan clutch is great, feels good. So I just need to get the blades ordered. I will get that on the way. I'll bolt this back together and sell this thing. And that should be the last we see of the Ford Ranger. It actually drives pretty well other than the fact that it has very, very, very little power. Earlier I thought I started it in the third gear and Josh was like, nah, you didn't, it can't do that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're right, there's second gear. It's pretty funny. Fun little truck, runs really, really well when it wants to start. So uh, now we know the trick. Works every time. Maybe we'll slap in the ECU and the fan on the way out the door and uh, somebody will enjoy this thing. It'll haul plenty of stuff around. I hope you guys enjoyed the Ford Ranger saga. I have a much, much, much cooler Ford coming up next. Uh, another Ford truck that I'm very excited to work on and uh, it'll run much better than this as well. It's got a V8 in it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchshare.com where you can get cool shirts, uh, kind of like this one. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Well, we've got it running. Oh yeah, we gotta do it. Do the thermostat. Don't, don't leave that part out.